But this interview is way more important than their interview because this is for Linnea Rock. You like that? Yes, thank it's you so much. Pigeon, huh? Welcome to Italy. This is your first time here, right? It is our first time here, and we are going to rock some balls and vaginas tonight. We are very, very excited about it. Uh, when we pulled up our tour bus, we, there was about maybe two or 3,000 kids running after the tour bus. And some of the girls were naked. They'd thrown their clothes to the side of the road. And uh, it was incredible. Great. So you had already some good inspiration for a new song? Oh, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already uh, writing a song about Milan. Great. I'm not sure what it's going to be titled. I'm pretty sure it's going to be called uh, I Had Sex with 50 Girls in Their uh, Anal Cavities. Okay. In Milan. That's the title. But I have to make it smaller. Usually it usually gets bigger if you rub it, on the table for but I'm going to try to make that one smaller okay. to fit it on the record. Out, okay. On our third record, which is tentatively titled, You Can't Catch Herpes Twice. So Sacha, did you expect uh, this band to become so huge all over the world? Did you expect it? Yes, I always knew, even back in 1981, when we first formed the band, that uh, we would probably be the biggest band in the world. Not because and we were really good musically, but mainly because we were really super cute. Uh, and uh, you know, when you when you have three guys, even four guys that are good looking in a band, it's it's crazy, you know, because people, a lot of girls come to our shows and they go crazy and they take the clothes off and they throw their clothes at us and they don't even they didn't even know our songs, they've never even heard our music. They just want to have sex with me because like I have uh, big biceps and. You know, they can see the uh, bulge in my pants, so they like that shit. But then when they hear the music, they go crazy, crazy. Like they really, 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 really want to do, you know, the, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so you are adored by millions, by the fans, as you already said, and uh, also by stars, actually, colleagues, let's call them like yes. that. And it's a bit surprising, because um, this is basically a parody, you know, of what they believe in. Well, they, uh, so that's, really I mean, what's, where's the, where's the, what's the trick, actually? What's the trick? How did you make it? <laughs> well, you know, I think, I think the reason why we have so many fans, you know, uh, Famous people, you know, people that aren't famous, people, you know, boys, girls, 90 year olds, uh, three year olds, a lot, a lot of kids. Yeah, it's a collective. The reason why we appeal to so many people is because we're writing honest music. And every one of our songs is true. It's totally, you know, from the heart. You know, so when, when a kid listens to a song like Asian Hooker, that kid is like, well, fuck yeah, I want a fucking Asian hooker. You know, it doesn't matter if you're 90 or if you're 7. I mean, everybody wants to fuck an Asian hooker and everybody can relate to that, you know? I mean, I think that's pretty cool when you're writing music like that. You know, the shocker, you know? Everybody's experienced, you know, not being able to get a boner with a girl at some point and then you gotta, you gotta do that to make her have an orgasm, right? Okay, so we we it's talk about people. Is it okay love if I say that kind of shit? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's okay. Is this this is for online? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. So. <laughs> okay, it's like an instructional. Yes. Video. Oh yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> the kids are gonna love this shit. <laughs> so we talk about people that love you, but what about you know people that hate this band? Hold on a second. As hey, people. keep it down over there. I'm trying to fucking do an interview. You're really loud, man. You know I can hear every stupid word you're saying. What I say? You're talking about your dick again. Nope. Okay. What was the question? Uh, so, what about the people that hate Steel Panther because, you know, you are a parody and, you, you know, know what? most of all it's new bands, actually. The people that hate us are fucking dicks, okay? So anybody who says they hate Steel Panther, if your buddy says they hate Steel Panther, you look at them and you go, when I spot Dude, what the audience, fuck is wrong with you? You're a fucking know, dick. I see you, you can't hate Steel you. Panther. They you sing know, about I all the bitch and shit. Yeah, fucking girls doing yeah, fucking yeah, drugs, yeah, partying yeah, and shit. And heavy fucking metal, dude. If you don't like pussy and you don't like partying and fucking doing yeah, drugs and shit, then you're a fucking I'm dick. So, you stop. Yeah. Okay, the message was clear. Perfect. Okay, do you remember the day when you decided, you know, from metal shop to metal school, then Steel Panther? What changed 
and uh, we, who we was who's, in, uh, whose idea uh, was that? Oh, to change the names. Yeah, change the name. Oh, we, we, we were originally Steel Panther back in 1981, and we changed the name okay. several times because we kept uh, well, a lot of things happened. Um, sometimes we would play clubs, like we were playing at the Viper Room, and we got into a fight with the, the uh, people that owned the Viper Room, and Michael kicked uh, the dude in the nuts. One of the dudes in the nuts, but he. Uh, I think was good friends with the dude who owned the Roxy, right? And so we had to change the name of the band just to get booked at the Roxy, and it was crazy. So we changed the name just because we wanted to keep getting gigs, but Michael kicked somebody in the nuts, and shit like that happens all the time. Like, uh, I fucked a lot, like, I accidentally fucked uh, the guy who owned the, the, the key club. I fucked his wife on accident. By accident. I didn't know, because she didn't say anything. It was very hard to understand her because my penis was in her mouth at the time. So, uh, shit like that happens and then all of a sudden you get in trouble with people that own clubs and shit like that. You gotta change your name. But it doesn't matter, it all worked out for the best because, you know, we went back to Steel Panther and we're like, blowing up and now we've sold like, hundreds of records. We have been together for... And that's a fact. That is a fact. I mean, right here in Italy, we've, uh, there's been over a thousand illegal downloads of our songs. Get together, you're in love, and you're like, oh, think about that. Sasha, do you ever allow to anybody to penetrate into the man so behind the character? Like well, you know what? <laughs> you <never gotta> There's, <laughs> this is who I am. This is, the, this is the truth. You can ask me anything you want, and I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna answer your questions truthfully. And uh, you know, that's the thing. A lot of people think, you know, that I'm just trying to be cool and I'm putting on some kind of act. Yeah. And then I just talk about fucking bitches all the time because I like to impress girls. It's listen, I I fucked four girls right before I got here, and it only took ten minutes because that's how fast I am. I can fuck them. They call me Chick a minute. I can fuck a chick a minute. Boom! I'm in. I'm out. I come. I'm on to the next chick, and I can get another boner super duper fast because. I take Viagra. It was so okay. fun because it was so my boner gets. It was all you gotta do is touch it a little bit, right back up, and then I'm back in, back on. You know what I'm saying? And I can also get a boner when I'm on cocaine, which is fucking cool. A lot of guys can't do that. I think that's pretty cool for a dude who's 54 years old to be able to get a boner and be on cocaine at the same time. Um, how did you leave uh, the the hair metal uh, days as a fan? You were born in LA or not? I mean, did you, did you breathe that Sunset Street Oh yeah, fuck, we, we've been living and playing in LA since, since before hair metal really blew up. I mean, we started in 1981. Actually, you invented hair metal. For a lot, believe it or not, a lot of it, yes. You know, I mean, the guys in Poison, we used to hang out with those guys all the time. And, you know, Lexi Fox, a bass player, he's really good at makeup and shit, and he was, he's been doing his makeup like that for a long, long time. And the guys in Poison used to see us at the rehearsal room. We used to rehearse in the same place in Vernon, downtown LA. And the guys in Poison used to come in and they'd get makeup tips from Lexi. And then all of a sudden we're at the record store one time and we look at this fucking album cover and we're like, oh my God, I wanna fuck that chick. Oh, but wait, it's not a chick, it's Poison, right? And it was their fucking debut record and I was like, what the fuck? And they had stole all Lexi's makeup tips and put it on their record and it was bullshit. But that, that's the story of our life. I mean, so, you know, always a day late, dollar short, but guess who's laughing now? We are because we're fucking all the bitches. It's not a selfish thing, it's more like, uh, being a service to the, to How do you work on your songs? Yeah. Always you know, as a band, really and really actually, really I mean, the attitude is very important and also to compose, you know what I mean? and uh, yes. you are, I mean, we I mean, imagine you in the studio like this, out, exactly, because this is you, right? There's you know what? <laughs> the, the songs, you know, the songs, I, no, no, there's a lot of I get inspired a lot. But for me, Where, wherever I am, songs will come to me. Sometimes I'll be having sex with a girl. By the way, looking at your and I'll have, I'll be inspired, and I'll just start. I'll grab a sharpie, and I'll just start writing words down on the back while I'm fucking, you know, and just writing shit down. You know, just pounding, you know, and just writing shit down. And then when I'm done, I'll fall asleep, and then I'll have to hunt that girl down just to get the words off of her back, right? So that's uh, 17 girls in a row. A lot of that 
a lot of that actually happened when I mean I had to write it on different girls and then I had to get all the girls back to find the words to the song. Very difficult. But that's, that's the composition. Yes, that is pure composition. Right, that is how artists work and this is artistry and sometimes you just have to you have to go with the flow, the artistic flow and you don't know when it's going to be come to you and when we shut up when you're going to get inspired by that kind of shit. But it, you have to roll with it, and then it just happens. Jesus, shut up! Um, is this, is this still pure fun for you? Did you ever consider this as a job? You know what, this is rock and roll is my business. My business is good. You know, I've always been a rock and roller, and you know... Shut up! I was like, that is fucking rude. That was rude. You know what? There's a video camera on. You are so loud. We're videotaping. Can you tone it down a little bit? You're, do, you're doing a print magazine. They can, they can. They don't have to make it loud. What's the circulation? It doesn't matter. There's a million people. A million people watch this every day. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Oh shit. God, oh God, lead singers. This oh, is yeah. so close. That's why. We've been on the road, it feels like years, and it's only been three days. Oh. You want to stab him in the neck. But you know, we seem to rise above our differences, and this is how the band works. And um, as long as he understands, I'm a boss. Everything works out just fine. And you are bossy? I'm not bossy, it's just very hard to work with. Very, very hard to work with. So I finally did it. Okay. I moved there and all my Is there any DVD in the plans around. since you have so yeah. many great videos? There is a DVD yeah. we're yeah. doing. Uh, it's, hopefully it'll be done soon. It's a show that we did at uh, Brixton Academy in oh, yeah. the UK. Mm -hmm. And it was a bitch and show. And we had fire and shit and bitches on stage. And uh, uh, there was a, a real live panther that we set loose in the crowd. And it jumped into the crowd and started to attack people. You know, if you it was amazing. To, uh, raise horses, but how many times do you get to see that? So we filmed it. Okay. And uh, other than a couple of, uh, you know, one person lost one of their arms, but other than that, everybody survived, and uh, it was a great show. And people, after the terror in the crowd, everybody got back into the show, and it was killer. Like the fire went off, and people forgot about the. The animal Everyone attack, really nice. and uh, it was a great show. Yes. One of the best shows we've ever done. It's coming out. It's coming out as soon uh, as we yeah, can yeah, edit it, which is very difficult to do because okay. a lot of the people that are editing it also sell drugs to the band. So they're constantly trying to sell drugs to us, and it's difficult when you have that going on. And is the Kramer Tiger Stripe finish still uh, your favorite baby? Maybe you should rename it Tiger Woods Guitar. I, don't I got know. a new. I got a new one. Oh really? I got a new one. It's a zebra stripe. Oh my god! I like it a lot, but it's like, but it kind of looks like a tiger because it's red and black zebra. But it kind of, which makes it kind of look like a tiger. But the stripes are actually like a zebra. And I know I'm talking really fast because I'm on cocaine, but it's really bitching. It's a great guitar and it's got a Floyd Rose tremolo and it fucking it's awesome. You're going Kramer to use it tonight, guitars. as well, tonight in Milan, you're using it? Huh? You're using it, the, the zebra one? Oh, I'm going to use it tonight, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Um, do you consider Steel Panther the living proof that anyone can make it? Or the proof that you have to be smart and have good genius to make it? Well, I think that, I think that you know, any, any kid can look at our band, you know, and be totally inspired in a number of ways. I mean, you know, if you if you're not super duper good looking, you can look at our our drummer sticks and go, well, oh, gosh, I could be a drummer in a band, you know. Or if you're, you know, if let's say you're not very smart, you know, and you're like, I'm not smart enough to be in a band, and, you know, I don't know if I could ever do that. You could look at Lexi, you know, our bass player, and he's really stupid, and he plays bass, and he's in our band. And then, or if you're, you know, super duper into yourself, and that's all you care about, and you, and you talk over people during their interviews and shit. Then you could be a lead singer, <laughs> totally arrogant and full of yourself, and just talking very loud and stuff like that. You could be a lead singer, or you know what? If you're just really kind, generous, generous person, and you're a great songwriter and an awesome guitar player, you could go. You know what? I'm gonna be the guy, the main guy in a band, like Satchel. So there you go.
and that's, uh, that's which is, is that a good answer? Yeah, very good. Perfect. Very good. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Which are the, the, the best memories you have of the tour together, with Motley Crue yeah. and Death Leopard? Oh my God. Last Mot December in the UK. I was there. Were I was there? there in London. Yeah, and I was absolutely surprised when you came out at six o'clock that Wembley was absolutely packed and everybody was singing along and it was quite an experience for me. So it was a great, <laughs> great experience and I'll tell you, Def Leppard, they were fucking awesome to us and we were awesome on that tour and uh, you know, Motley Crue, they, they, they were great. But the only thing I regret is, you know, Tommy Lee. Um, we started off the tour and it was great, we were good friends. Okay. And then, uh, you know, the first night of the tour, Tommy comes backstage and he catches me. I'm fucking okay. his girlfriend. Oh my god. Yeah, I was fucking his girlfriend. I had no idea that it was his girlfriend. She didn't tell me. And Tommy walks in and he's like, what the fuck? And he starts to cry and he runs away. So I got the whole band, we're all looking for Tommy and it turns out he's in hiding and crying underneath his roller coaster. And uh, we found him and we found him. Keep it down! And we made up, but I'll tell you what, it was after after that, about four days after that, you know, you know, he was into the band again. In the front row, wearing a Steel Panther t-shirt and shit. And four or five days after that, he walks in and Lexi is fucking his girlfriend. And then he got pissed off and he wouldn't talk to us after that. And uh I but you know what? I have a feeling though, we're gonna do Sweden Rock with Motley Crue this year. Get the fuck! This is my fucking interview! You're talking about Get me? Out of my Are you talking interview? about me? Get out of my fucking oh. I will fucking pound your fucking ass! <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna do Sweden Rock with Motley Crue this year, and I have a feeling that we're gonna make up and everything's gonna be just fine. Okay. You want some more juice? I'm really a nice guy. Get, get out of my fucking oh, face! There you go. Get out of my fucking face! You, you ruined my interview! There you go. <laughs> That's our singer. We're good friends too, but sometimes we've been on the road together for a while, so it gets very difficult. You want an olive? Okay. <gasps> Thanks a lot, Sasha. You're welcome. I love Thank you. you. I Thanks, love Mom. you too. Hey, Thank look you. at how cool my camera is.